Welcome back to Man vs. Meeple, the show where we talk about everything board game related. I am your host, Jeremy Salinas, aka Dragon Strike. Today, we'll be taking a look at Grifters from Indie Boards and Cards. To help me talk to you about the game, I have my host, David Waybright. Hello once again, everyone. Yeah, this is another one of those games that came out, or we got our copy, actually, back at Gen Con. It's just now coming out for the rest of everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're just finally getting around to getting it at the table here and reviewing it. But it's, it's a good little game, I have to say. I was pleasantly surprised by this one. It is a two-to-four player uh, I'm not hand sure. management style hand game. management, almost, I don't want to say deck building, because it's not that, it's but not it has a, has a little bit of a deck building vibe to it in, in a terms hidden of how sort you're playing. Of way. Yeah. But it plays very quickly. 30 yeah. minutes, in and out, you're done. Yeah, this is a fun fun little game. I Kind of filler-esque, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, it can last about 30 it's minutes, 30 plus. Components yeah, to it. It's got some meteor components. So the idea of the game is that it takes place in a dystopian universe, very similar to that from Coup and Resistance, Resistance yeah. uh, that, any, that the other big indie boards and cards games are uh, uh, set in. Uh, to start the game, each player will start with uh, three ringleaders. Yeah, this is kind of a... It, it revolves around sort of the seedy underbelly sure. of pulling off jobs like heists and, and, sure. and that sort of thing and, and capers. So you're, you're kind of like gang warfare a little bit yeah. and, and, and trying to, on your turn, either pull off a caper or, you know, do a little job. By, by, by stealing from the government coffers or stealing from your opponents. Yeah, it's all about... Lot, there's a lot of take that It's all about game. grabbing money, and there's a quite a bit of take that. Sure. So uh, to start off the game, like I said, each player will have three ringleaders. Each of these ringleaders allows you three unique abilities. One is to... Uh, the mastermind lets you go and draw another card from the top of the deck. Right. That's how you get more cards. One of them steals money directly from the coffers, the government coffers, which is a, um, a portion of money that is... Depend, it's a different amount depending on how many players are playing. Yeah, it's basically the supply of money, but it is also one of the end game conditions. Once, it, sure. once the money's out, that's one way the game can end, so they vary it depending on the player count. And another ringleader lets you steal two money from any of the opponents at the table. Also, each player will get three unique cards from the top of the deck. So yeah, you'll randomly. start off with, uh, random. Yeah. Uh, so you'll start off with six cards. And these um, these cards too. Uh, each of the ringleaders ringleaders are from a different color or a different sort of faction, if you sure. will, of the gangs. Uh, the blue ones, I believe, are they're the brains. Sure. And then the green ones are based on speed and sort of agility. And then the red ones are the brawn. Okay. And depending on what cards you have in your hand, it'll kind of dictate some of the effects that you can pull off during the game. They kind of capture those elements thematically right uh there are jobs that you can pull off um yeah. there are five different types of jobs um but again those will scale depending on how many players are playing we have a two-player game set up so we have the blue uh red and green uh yeah. jobs set up now we've dis uh, we've splayed them all out for you guys to see them all but they're typically stacked into the blue cards Right, you know, there's a green stack, a red stack, and a blue stack, and they go in sequential order. So yeah. they all start the with one. On top. Mm -hmm. So it basically lets the game progress to where the first jobs that are out there to complete are relatively easy. You know, this one takes three green, mm -hmm. whereas at the end, the fourth one takes four green, a blue, and a red. Okay. So the game builds up to that. It allows you to flesh out your deck, your, your deck a little bit so that you can prepare for pulling off some of those jobs. Right. But in addition to the jobs, the other thing you can do is the caper, which sure. is where you're basically playing a single card mm -hmm. onto your tableau, which we haven't even gotten to. It's yeah. kind of the, one of the most interesting so, so, yeah, this elements. Is, this is the really cool portion of the game. So on your turn, uh, and, and it goes in turn order, what you're allowed to do is either play one card mm -hmm. to enact the effect of that card, and there's 18 or 19 unique cards yeah, in the game. Yeah, something like that. So all to have different kinds of abilities on them. Uh, so you can play one card to night one and, and enact its ability, or you can play a group of cards and not enact any of the abilities, but to do a job. Right. And you're what, you're, when what you're doing there is you're basically matching, color code matching, to whatever job you're trying to pull off. Yeah, for you, example, that first card, the three greens, as soon as I have an opportunity to play three greens at once, mm -hmm. I can play them, and that's pulling off a job for my turn. Right. I'm able to do that satisfy that and immediately take this and you know there's a reward and also these cards uh, there's some set collection 
associated with these cards at the end of the game for some additional end of game scoring. Sure. So pulling off these jobs typically allow you to either draw more specialists in your hand, that's from a face down deck, uh, to steal money from the coffers or steal money from a, a specific opponent right. that's at the table. And then, and then, like you said, the capers is where you're just playing one card, mm-hmm. and not only those, the special abilities have the same range. Right. Some of them just say take two ISK, which is the money. Right. Uh, or is it ISK? It's ISK. Yeah, ISK. Mm-hmm. Um, or you, you're taking money from your opponents. Yeah. You're randomly taking cards from opponents. There's some right. nasty cards in there right. uh, to achieve some things. But it's satisfying because when you can't pull off a job, you can always pull off a caper. Yeah, absolutely. So in turn order, players will play one card or, or, or multiple cards to their, uh, to their tableau. And when they get back to you... All the cards that you played on the previous night, or at the end of your turn, all the cards you played will move forward one round. Yeah, that's how each turn each turn begins with time advancing. Sure. So the cards that you played the last turn will first move up the board, mm-hmm. and in fact, in this last spot, those cards will go off into the refresh area. Uh-huh. So this is where I was going with the deck builder comparison earlier. It's almost like you're waiting three rounds to uh-huh. get your cards back because the cards that dump off the end at the end of that turn, you get to take those finally back into your hand. And that plays now, in kind of the, the timing aspect of the game yeah. on, on when to play the cards. Yeah, because you could pull off a great job and then go, oh. I had no cards to I, play next I, turn that those, do anything. I can't use those cards sure. for three more turns. Sure. So, uh, yeah. So the game plays, I, I mean, that's uh, that's basically the game yeah. in the nutshell, right? You're, you're playing round after round uh, until one of three game end conditions occur. Those uh, game in conditions are if all the specialists have been drawn, yep. if all the money from the coffers has been taken, or if all the jobs have been performed. Right. And then it's simply a, 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 a comparison of who has the most money at the end. So some of these, uh, or all of these are set collection. As you said, mm-hmm. you're going to add these into uh, the, the total amount of money you have and then determine a winner. Yeah, basically if you have two of any one color, it's worth a s- certain amount of money, all the way up to having all four of the cards of one color is yeah. a significant amount. So you just add them up to your money. And what's cool about those three different end game conditions is people could be pulling off jobs while you're quietly playing caper after caper, stealing, that stealing money, money from the coffers, <laughs> sure. stealing money from them. Sure. So I, I don't know that we've ever seen someone employ that strategy to success, uh-huh. but it is an interesting dynamic when you can sort of find slightly different path to victory. Right. I, I, honestly, I think that's probably the best way because a lot of these don't give a whole bunch of money unless you've collected all four. Right. And every bit of money that you're taking money away from someone else is is a, is a swing. So if I take two from you, it's two from me. It's a four-point swing. Yeah. W- w- it's funny because... Taking money from the coffers, in some ways when you're doing it, kind of seems like in, like in many games, one of those, oh, I guess I'll do this and take two money from the coffers. But it really is more significant than that because when you're taking two money, I mean, some of these bonuses really aren't more than two money. Sure. You know, so, uh, and the games we've played, too, the, towards the end of the game, the bouncing around of these cards mm-hmm. is crazy because some of the cards you're playing... You know, someone's. You've got a set of three green. Someone's got one. They take one of your green. Then uh-huh. another guy takes one of your green. All of a sudden, your set of three is nothing. Yeah. Because you don't get anything for one card. Yeah. Um, and ta- but, and taking these cards is typically done with a specialist. They're specialists, and they right. allow you to to switch jobs with other players that they've collected. Uh, but uh, we don't want to overshadow the fact of taking taking money from other players is important. But taking money from this also yeah it speeds up the end game conditions. So exactly, if you have, a you good have some lead, control. You get a good lead, and you can just take money from the coffers yeah. as much as can and mm-hmm. and uh, quiet out. The other ones are not as easy to control. Like yeah. the jobs are going to take about as long as they're going to take. Sure. Uh, the specialist deck is going to be... I, I would say that's probably got to be the, the rarest mm-hmm. uh, yeah, one. Yeah, I agree. Um, but yeah, c- getting that money is that one little sneaky way that you could kind of sneak up and end the game before people are done with the jobs, which is what most people are going to be focused mm-hmm. on. Most people, the natural instinct is like, okay, we got these stacks of jobs, we got to complete them. Yeah. But you have to remember there's other end game conditions, which is cool. So I like this I like this game a lot. Yeah. I, I, my only con really for the game is the luck factor at the very beginning of the game. When you're drawing your initial three cards, there are some cards in here that are just better than other cards. I mean, that's pretty typical with most games. But if you draw, say, for instance, three blues right exactly. off the start, you're able to kind of boost your start game, uh, start game condition, right? Um, that can be mitigated by doing a draft. 
As well, simple as that. But the, the, the other cool thing, though, even without the draft, say you draw three blue, and I think one of our first games I did this because I drew up cards, and I'm like, oh, well, okay, my first turn, I'll complete this job because I could. But then what I didn't realize in that first game is all three of those green cards are gone, were gone for a sure, while. Sure, sure. So the next ones that required some green... I, I was out of luck on green until uh-huh. I could get more green in my hand or wait three rounds. And then, so basically, if you take those first jobs, it generally makes it easier for the other people to take the next jobs. Yeah. Which kind of balances out, but it would be interesting to see a draft on those initial cards. Yeah. That wouldn't be too hard either. No. It, and that kind of leads me into my positives, too. By even going after these jobs early, say you are able to secure a couple of these jobs early and you're taking money or drawing specialists, there's enough mitigation in the game to allow you to steal those same resources back from that player right. when you have the right cards in your hand. Right. Yeah, as much as, the, as, much as these bounce around at the end, mm-hmm. it almost... Like, the next time I play, I think I'm going to take a, maybe a little bit of a wait-and-see attitude where I'm going to play some individual cards, not, mm-hmm. to, not to tell my strategies <laughs> too soon, individual cards to do capers and get just a bank of money sure. going and pick up some new cards and then just pounce on some of those jobs on my sort of fourth and fifth turn. And, and, and the combo system is really cool, too. There's a lot of cards in here that uh, feed off each other, like the Femme Fatale, which allows you to pull, I believe allows you to pull... Um, oh, yeah. Cards back after playing specialists, you may advance time and then play another specialist immediately. Yeah, you, so, some of the rule-breaking cards that allow yeah. you to not have to wait three rounds necessarily. Right. Or you're, you're swapping out some characters sure. or even swapping some characters with other players. Uh, yeah, remember the uh, the wheelman? Choose a team in your yep. hideout, return all but one of them. Yep. So you, you're able to go back through your team and say you've built a massive team to get one of these higher cards. You pull them all back but, but one of them, and then you have a giant hand to right. go right back into the Grab next Grab another job. Card. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, the wheelman and the femme fatale are the ones that are pretty memorable. Fresh in your mind. Pretty memorable. So what are your thoughts? Do you have do you I really negatives? liked it. This, You know, even after our review here, it is a hard game to... Um, sum up and explain like oh it's one of these types of games it's it really it's hard to categorize sure. um but it's a lot of fun you know i wouldn't put it into the deck builder character category Mm-mm. um i'm not really even sure i mean it's kind I of a hand say, management it's totally hand management yeah. style game hand management but but a nice sort of light one that has a nice layer of depth to it uh-huh. for as sort of straightforward and and simple as and it is and you're in and out very quick Exa- as yeah. well you're definitely in and out and it's you know, uh, easy one to teach. Oh, like yeah. if someone knows how to play this game, you can pretty much sit down with anyone mm-hmm. and be up and running really quickly. Yeah. So suggest it. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think this is a great little game to pick up. Something to, to add to game night when mm-hmm. you're playing something else. Um, it's got a nice theme that you can sort of uh, tie along mm-hmm. with some other games of the similar theme. But yeah, yeah it's a good group game too. Four pe- four players. It's one thing we didn't talk about. Uh, we haven't played this two-player. No, we haven't. Have you, you haven't? No. Uh-uh. So I, I'd be interested to see how it plays, but it feels like it might be a decent two-player. The yeah. interaction might not be quite as fun because uh-huh. you're not able to uh, dam- you know, throw that around to as many people. Mm-hmm. But four players, it's a blast. Yeah. I really liked it. Yeah. I'm not a huge uh, coup or resistance. I, I love deduction games, but I'm not the kind of person that enjoys like Werewolf and those style of uh-huh. games. So this is easily, easily my favorite indie board in the card game. Period. Really? My, my, definitely my style of game. I love hand management. I like, like games that have, uh, give you good decisions with the cards that you have in your hand. And take that. <laughs> and has, has the take out aspects of it too. So that guys is Grifters. Go check it out. It's a really really fun game. Make sure you guys make comments below. Let us know your thoughts if you played the game. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, follow us on Twitter and all Facebook, of our social. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, let us know if there's something you want us to take a look at, and uh, come back and check us out next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Season one of Man vs Meeple is sponsored by TMG Games, publisher of great games like Yokohama. Guilds of London, and the soon-to-be-released Coliseum.